Hey guys, welcome. So I have a video for you today on adding users to Accept CE. Um, I'll show you a little bit about troubleshooting toward the end of the video also in case you're trying to delete users and they're being stubborn and they're showing up on your login screens and you know you've deleted everything. I'll show you a little bit of troubleshooting. Most of the stuff, if not everything, will be done in Graphical. I'll give you one command in terminal though toward the end of the video in case you're having problems deleting users. But uh, adding users um, is something that uh, was requested by someone about a week ago and I just got to this project, sorry. And that person wanted to know how to add users in XFCE. It's not done through your normal standard settings. You can uh, use graphical or you can use terminal, but I'm gonna be using graphical today. And I'm going to approach it from the angle of a brand new user to Linux Mint. Filming in 1920 by 1080, you can adjust your YouTube player accordingly. So welcome to Linux for Seniors. Should be an icon floating above your time and date. Linux is for any age, but the name of my channel is Linux for Seniors. And if you are not a subscriber and you'd like to subscribe, click that logo down here. If you don't see that, you go find me on YouTube. That's the reason I'm leaving that watermark. Okay, so I'm going to close that screen. So if you were to open up your standard settings, this is more likely why that message came about, is uh, you are not going to find adding users in here. You can type user in here though, and you can click that, or if you have a standard tower computer, Alt and F3. On a laptop, sometimes you'll have to hit function Alt F3 because your F1 through F12s are sometimes pre-assigned. On my other laptop with Linux Mint, the F3 is a brightness key on mine. I usually have to use the function Alt F3 if I want to open this dialog box. And then you can just type in user. Users and groups. So I'll do it from the Mint menu to make it easier for you. So let me walk you through the whole process. I currently have two users. All right, first of all, if you're not aware of this and if you're fairly new to Mint, a special welcome to you, but in your terminal box, when you open this up, this part here is your logged in user. This part here is the name of your computer. Again, this is made for new users. So we have two. So Sam is the one that installed this system. So Sam is our super user. He is the one that has the authority to create stuff. Mark, on the other hand, is a desktop user and he is restricted. He is not allowed to install software. You may want to think about that if you're allowing children to use your computer. All right, so we have add, delete, manage, advanced, close, and help. So I will first start with the add button. Now it's asking me for a password for Sam. Sam is the only super user that has the authority to create things. If I have more than one super user that has the authority to add, you'll get a dialog box in here. I'll show you that in a minute. All right, right now we're gonna do creating user. How about if we pick Mary? As soon as I do that, you'll see that in lowercase. Now, if I decided to put in Mary Smith, for instance, the username becomes Mary S, no space. Let's just make it really simple. If you're doing this for children, be careful about encrypting their home folder because if they lose their password and then they'll come and knock on your door to have you help them recover their files, you're gonna have a heck of a time with encrypted folders because you as the super user also can do a lot of things in the background like recover files and stuff, especially with unencrypted folders. Really not gonna get into that part of it today, but I'm just saying, once you encrypt that folder, it's extremely hard to get in there if case they lose their password. Let's face it, it does happen occasionally. So we're gonna stick with the simple Mary username. The next option is password. May I highly encourage that you do not use that because once you click that, do not ask for password on login. It is no security whatsoever. Anyone can turn on your computer, fire up Linux Mint, click on Mary and go right through her, all of her folders. 
at least try to set a password, if not generate one randomly. This is a generator, so this basically generates random passwords. If you are going to use that, you make sure you copy this down upper and lower case letters. I'm going to do set password by hand. So if the password is too short, I'm going to do this on purpose. First of all, they both have to match, but if they're too short, it'll tell you that. It needs to be five or more. So let's fix that problem. You can use the tab key to move to the next line if you like. What if you add an extra character? So if I were to add another character, you can probably see the alignment is not correct, but when you hit OK, it'll tell you that. Okay. So yes, it does verify. And that's very important because when you create accounts, they're all tied to these kind of things. All right, now Mary has a custom logo on it. We can uh, also I'll briefly talk about groups and then I'll talk about the delete a little bit later. Now Mary belongs to her own group. So all users do. They all belong to their same group. So I'm going to go down to the M's and you'll see that. Here's Mark. He has his own group. Sam is down here. He has his own group. Not really going to get into groups today, but um, we're going to get into account type though. The account type is custom currently. We can also promote Mary to administrator to allow her to install and upgrade software. But let's say Mary's a child, so you want to restrict that user so they can't install software and change settings affecting all users. So I'm going to do that on purpose. Now I'll talk about the advanced settings. So we could add information in here. That's just contact info. User privileges, I would use this wisely. And if you don't know what the setting is, my suggestion is just leave it alone. But these are all clickable. The advanced tab, if Sam wants to disable Mary's account without destroying her files, he disables that from login. Disabling the account just means Mary can't log in. You have the authority to do that as the administrator and to turn it back on again. So when this is off, that means the user is allowed to log in. When this is on, the user is not allowed to log in, disabling the account. The home directory, another name for that is home folder, is the master home folder contains all the regular users. And you'll see that in a minute. Mary's just one. The uh, shell is what uh, I use uh, a lot of times and so do other folks in here to do different, different commands and that's using born again shell. Bash stands for born again shell. Now you can see Mary's main group is Mary. So I'm going to close the box and go and open up file manager Thunar. This is root main system. All right. This is home. This is the home of all your users. Sam is the current logged in guy. We have Mary. We have Mark. They have X's on them. So when Mary logs in, it will uh, create all of these folders with the exception of a couple of them. I'm talking standard folders like documents and music and pictures and so forth. They'll be blank, but nonetheless, it generates folders and it'll say Mary across here so she can populate these with her own documents, her own pictures, her own music and etc. The same thing goes with web browsers. Mary will definitely not be getting your bookmarks, so you don't have to worry about that, of whatever web browsers you choose to install. Also, Mary gets not this wallpaper, but the standard wallpaper, usually with the Mint logo on it. And she can certainly change that. Get the standard panel bar. You have the standard Mint logo with the black and white one instead of this green one. Same thing goes with this mouse cursor. She'll get the standard one. Because this particular user, Sam, installed this cur mouse cursor, Control H. Maybe you've seen some of my other videos where I install this in period icons or dot icons, as I call it. Icon sets and mouse cursors. This is in Sam's, so Mary's not going to have access to this. So she gets their standard cursor, standard wallpaper. The other thing about this system on mine, when I create a new user, the display gets converted 
3840 to 2160 instead of what I'm filming in today. I have to manually change that. And so do you if, if you have the same setup. So you can always change your screen res or at least look at it. And they all are different depending on the, the monitor and the graphics card and if it's a laptop or a tower computer, for instance. So hopefully we're clear on what happens with the, the creation process when it comes to that. Okay, I'll turn off hidden. So basically these folders are the home folders for the users. Standard users, standard users. So what if you want to promote a standard user and you're getting tired of being asked to have them have you install programs from them. So um, let's say Mark is now responsible enough to install his own software. Um, just hypothetically here. He is currently still a desktop user. So we're going to change that. It's asking for a password for Sam. And I'm going to promote Mark to an administrator. And then I am, uh, as long as Mark is logged out, when he logs back in, he'll have that authority. I'm going to close this box on purpose because right now I have the authentication for Sam. So when I reopen this box, I'm going to do Mary this time. When I do this, I get a dialog box now. If you recall, I did not get a display for Sam. It was just... Uh, give us authentication because now I have two users that have the authority to make changes, Mark and Sam, to convert that user or make changes in here. So far, so good? Okay. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about troubleshooting. Okay, I, I already talked about advanced settings, add, manage groups. Uh, the only one I didn't click on was help. But anyways, I'm sure you can walk through that. And of course, the close or the X is the same. Now, let's talk about deleting. You highlight the account. As long as you're logged in as one of these super users, you can delete them. So I have the authority from Sam or Mark to do this with. Now it's asking me for a dangerous command. Do you want to keep the files or remove them? Or do not remove the account. And you can read the dialog box here. So I'm going to pick the latter one. I'm going to actually remove Mary's home folder, which removes all of her files too. And this is now out of the menu. To verify that, open up your file manager system. Mary's home folder is gone. If you log out of your system and you still see Mary on your login screens as options, um, reboot the machine, reboot your computer, and then reopen this user manager. Okay, and then if, if you see Mary's account populate back in here, uh, that would be a glitch and that does happen occasionally, then open up your terminal. As long as you have rebooted already, you should be able to do this. sudo is super user do space user del is user delete and the name of the user password user mary does not exist is the message you want to get now if it just automatically went to another prompt then do it again do that again and that's the message you should have on your screen now log in and out of your system and you'll probably find that mary's no longer part of your login screen. Okay. So uh, the new feature for Mint 21.3, the login screen part can be done on the left, the center, or the right. That option, if you missed my video on that, is done through here, through here, through here. The standard behavior is left alignment. That means your usernames will appear on the left of your login screen. If you want them in the center, you click that, they'll appear in your center or the right side. Mine is currently set to right. I don't have to hit save. All I do is change it and do that. And it's immediate. As soon as you log out, all your usernames will appear in whatever section you decided to put. 
Thank you for watching.